Welcome to the part two of chest x-ray interpretation. After the first part where we discuss the landmarks and the findings in a normal chest x-ray, this is the second part of chest x-ray interpretation where we will be looking at abnormalities seen on chest x-ray. Remember the ABCDE of chest x-ray where A stands for airway as what we took up in the previous lecture for airway, we look at tracheal placement to check for tracheal deviation, and we look at the carinal angle. On this x-ray, what do you see? Take note, at this time, we are just discussing A for airway. This is an example of tracheal deviation. You see the trachea highlighted in blue, and this shows right tracheal deviation. The trachea is considered to be deviated if a portion anywhere along its length is completely to the left or the right of the midline. Take note that you should first make sure that the film is not rotated as a rotated film can give you the impression of tracheal deviation when the trachea is actually midline. When you suspect that the trachea is deviated, look for a possible cause. If the trachea is deviated towards the deceased side, you look for conditions that pull the trachea, such as lung collapse, pneumonectomy or lobectomy, unilateral fibrosis, or a genesis of the lung, also called lung aplasia. If the trachea is deviated away from the deceased side, you look for conditions that push the trachea, such as tension pneumothorax, a large pleural effusion, mediastinal masses, or paratracheal masses. On this x-ray, what do you see? Take note again that we are just discussing A for airway. The carinal angle is the angle between the left and right main stem bronchus. Normally, the angle is between 40 and 100 degrees. An increase in the carinal angle is an indirect sign of pathology in the heart, mediastinum, or lungs. If there is increased carinal angle, then there is something pushing from beneath the carina or there is something pulling from above the right or left main stem bronchus. In this photo, the trachea and the left and right main stem bronchi are highlighted in blue. Take note that the carinal angle is greater than 100 degrees. Possible causes of a widened carinal angle are a subcarinal mass, such as bronchial carcinoma or hiatal hernia, left atrial enlargement, cardiomegaly, or pleural effusion, or right or upper left lobe collapse, pulling the main stem bronchus upwards. Next is B for breathing. If you remember from the previous lecture, in order to check for breathing, you have to check for the following. Are the lungs uniformly expanded? You have to compare the lung fields. Look around the edges of each lungs, look at the costophrenic angles, and look at the four silhouettes. What do you see here? This x-ray is an example of consolidation or airspace shadowing. Consolidation is the replacement of alveolar air by fluid, cells, pus, or other material. Pneumonia is the most common cause of consolidation. It is also sometimes seen in primary TB. Features of a consolidation on a chest x-ray include patchy shadowing, which is a non-uniform shadowing, and the border is not well demarcated. Lobar or segmental density, wherein the density should correspond anatomically to a lobe or lung segment. An air bronchogram. The presence of an air bronchogram would confirm that the density was in the alveoli and not the large airways. No loss, no loss of lung volume. Lung volumes may actually increase in the early stages of consolidation. In later st stages, there can be small loss of lung volume due to secretions obstructing the airways. However, as a general rule, there is no significant loss of lung volume in consolidation. In the x-ray shown, there is consolidation in both lungs with moderate sparing of the apical segment of the right upper lobe. There is patchy airspace shadowing. The consolidation is marked in green. 
If you look closely, you will also notice an air bronchogram, which is seen inside the red circle. What do you see on this slide? Look at the areas marked in green. This shows an example of air bronchogram. An air bronchogram is the radiographic appearance of an air-filled bronchus that is surrounded by fluid-filled or solid alveoli. It can appear when there is consolidation, collapse, or pulmonary edema in the surrounding alveoli. What do you see now? That was an example of atelectasis. We will go back to that image later. Atelectasis is the collapse or failure of all or part of the lung to expand due to loss of air in the alveoli. Lobar collapse refers to collapse of a particular lobe of the lung, while lung collapse refers to collapse of the whole lung. General features of collapse on a chest radi radiograph include an increase in density representing lung devoid of air, so you will see white. Other signs indicating decrease in lung volume, such as displacement of mediastinum or trachea towards the collap collapsed lung, elevation of the hemidiaphragm, compensatory overinflation of adjacent lobes or opposite lung. Causes of atelectasis are consolidation, bronchial obstruction by an endobronchial tumor, mucus plugging of major airways, other tumors, lymphadenopathy, or an aneurysm compressing the bronchi, inhaled foreign body like peanuts, or iatrogenic like an endotracheal tube inserted too far. External pulmonary compression, such as in pleural effusion or mass, may also cause atelectasis. Also, abnormalities in surfactant production, such as in oxygen toxicity and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Other etiologies may be inflammatory, such as in TB or fungal infection, and lung fibrosis. The previous film showed right upper lobe atelectasis or right upper lobe collapse. Radiographic features of right upper lobe collapse are increased density in the right upper zone. The horizontal fissure is displaced upwards. There is loss of definition of right mediastinal margins, elevation of the right hilum, right tracheal deviation, and the rest of the lung looks blacker than the left lung. This is because the middle lobe and right lower lobe overinflate to compensate for the reduced volume in the hemithorax caused by the lung collapse. The image on the left is a diagram diagrammatic representation of right upper lobe collapse. One is the right heart border, two is the left heart border, three is the increased density in the right upper zone, four is the normal position of the horizontal fissure, and five is the horizontal fissure displaced upwards. Six shows right tracheal deviation. In the x-ray film shown on this slide, there is increased density of the right upper zone, elevation of the horizontal fissure, and loss of definition of the right upper mediastinal margins. The collapsed upper right lobe is highlighted in purple. The white dotted line 1 represents where the horizontal fissure is normally located, while dotted line 2 represents the abnormal location of the horizontal fissure due to atelectasis of the right upper lobe. What do you see here? That was an example of middle lobe atelectasis or middle lobe collapse. Features on the radiograph include increased density in the right mid zone, loss of the right heart border, horizontal fissure displaced downwards, and the rest of the right lung looks blacker than the left lung. The image on the left is a diagrammatic representation of middle lobe collapse. One is the right heart border, two is the left heart border, three is increased density in the right mid zone, four is the normal position of the horizontal fissure, five is the horizontal fissure displaced downwards. The x-ray film shows the collapsed middle lobe in purple. 
what do you see on the slide? That was an example of right lower lobe collapse or right lower lobe atelectasis. Features on radiograph include triangular shadowing at the right base medially, loss of definition of the right hemidiaphragm, elevation of the right hemidiaphragm, depression of the right hilum, the right heart border is not obscured, and the rest of the right lung looks blacker than the left lung. The image on the left shows a diagrammatic representation of right lower lobe atelectasis. One is the right heart border, two is the left heart border, three is the triangular shadowing at the right base medially, four is the normal position of the horizontal fissure, five is the horizontal fissure displaced downwards. The radiograph on the right shows the collapsed right lower lobe in purple. What do you see on this film? This is an example of left upper lobe collapse or left upper lobe atelectasis. Features on a radiograph are increased density of the left upper zone, upper zone veil-like shadowing with no clear lower border, loss of definition of left upper cardiac border and left mediastinal margin, elevation of the left hilum. The image on the left is a diagr diagrammatic representation of left upper lobe atelectasis. One is the right heart border, two is the left heart border, three is the increased density seen in the left upper zone with a veil-like shadowing and no clear lower border. Four is the left tracheal deviation. On the image on the right, there is increased density of the left upper zone with no clear lower border and the loss of definition of the left upper heart border and left mediastinal margin. You can, however, see the outline of the aortic arch and descending thoracic aorta marked with a black dotted line. This indicates that there is air in the lung tissue directly adjacent to the aortic arch and descending thoracic aorta. The aorta lies in the posterior mediastinal, so the aerated lung must be the posterior segment of the left upper lobe. This means that it must be the anterior segment of the left upper lobe that collapsed, or the lingula. The radiograph shows the, collapse, the collapsed left upper lobe in purple. What do you see on this x-ray? That was an example of left lower lobe collapse. Features include triangular shadowing overlying the left heart medially, also called double heart shadow. Loss of definition of the medial part of the left hemidiaphragm, elevation of the left hemidiaphragm, depression of the left hilum. Take note that the left heart border is not obscured and the rest of the lung looks blacker than the right lung. The image of the left is a, is a diagrammatic representation of left lower lobe atelectasis. One is the right heart border, two is the left heart border, three is the triangular shadowing overlying the left heart medially or the double heart shadow. The radiograph on the right shows the left lower lobe in purple. There is triangular opacity behind the left heart shadow. The heart is not obscured and there is decreased volume of the left lung. What do you see on this slide? That was an example of a radiograph showing pneumonectomy. Pneumonectomy is an operation to remove a whole lung. Radio radiologic signs are diffuse haziness and loss of hemidiaphragm where the lung has been removed smaller hemithorax where the lung has been removed, and hyperinflation of the opposite lung field, and which appears darker. Mediastinal or tracheal shift towards the side with no lung. You may see surgical clips and or evidence of rib resection. Take note that you cannot differentiate between a pneumonectomy and a complete lung collapse on a chest radi radiograph as they both look the same. This is where a good history comes in. Above, radiographic images are identical, 
there is diffuse haziness throughout the right hemithorax, there is median stinal shift towards the side of the operation with associated tracheal deviation. If you look carefully, you can see sutures where the top of the right main stem bronchus should be. The right radiograph shows the trachea marked in blue and the sutures highlighted in white, surrounded by a black dotted line. What do you see on this film? That was an example of a solitary mass lesion. A solitary mass lesion is a term used to describe a discrete area of whiteness situated within a lung film. It is not necessarily circular. It can be round, oval, or irregular. Radiologic factors to assess are size. A size greater than one centimeter in diameter makes the lesion significant. Margin may be described as irregular, lobulated, or speculated margin, and these suggest malignancy. Cavitation. Both neoplasm and infection may cause cavitation. The present x-ray may be compared with the previous x-ray to assess growth. And when you see a prominent mass lesion, you should also look for other lesions. Differential diagnosis for solitary mass lesions include neoplasm such as primary bronchial carcinoma or solitary metastasis, benign mass lesions such as hamartoma or neurofibroma, infections such as TB or other infections that may cause consolidation or abscess, and arteriovenous malformations. The above image are identical radiographs. The image on the right shows the mass marked in red. For this slide, what do you see? The previous slide showed an example of multiple mass lesions. Differential diagnosis for multiple mass lesions in chest x-ray include metastasis, which are seen as usually well-defined nodules of varying sizes, cavitation, usually seen in squamous cell carcinomas, sarcomas, and metastasis from colonic primaries. Another common differential is abscess, which are usually seen as cavitations with thick irregular wall. Rare causes of multiple mass lesions include rheumatoid nodules, Wegener's granulomatosis, multiple arteriovenous malformations. The two images above are identical radiographs of a patient with multiple lung metastasis throughout both lung fields. The right image shows the metastasis marked in red. What do you see on this slide? That was an example of a cavitating lung lesion. Solitary mass lesions may sometimes cavitate, causing a cavitated lung lesion. A cavitation is a hole in the lung with a wall, lumen, and contents. A cavity is often easier to see from a distance, so stepping away from the x-ray can help. Causes of cavitation are abscess, neoplasm, cavitation around a pneumonia, fibrosis, rheumatoid nodules. Possible radiologic signs are the center of the lesion is darker than the periphery as no blood passes through it. You may see a fluid level. Look for a horizontal line within the lesion. There will be whiteness which represent fluid below the line and black which represent air above the line. Compare with old films where you may possibly see the cavity developing. If you see a cavitating lesion, look at the wall of the cavity. The thicker the wall, the more likely it is to be a neoplasm. Generally, if the wall is more than 5 millimeters thick, then it is more likely to be a neoplasm as opposed to an abscess. The images above are identical, showing a cavitating lung lesion in the right upper lobe. Within the cavity is a fungal ball which appears whiter than the rest of the cavity. The right image shows the cavity in yellow. The fungal ball within the cavity is shown in light yellow. 
What do you see on this image? That was an example of a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is air in the pleural space. It is usually seen on a pH chest radiograph. A small pneumothorax may be easier to see on an expiratory film as the reduced volume of the lungs in expiration makes the pneumothorax look relatively larger. The important radiological feature to look for is the lung edge outlined by air in the pleural space. Radiologic features to look for are one side is blacker. Air in the pleural space causes the lung to recoil to a resting state as the negative pressure in the pleura is lost. The gap left between the lung edge and the parietal pleura is filled with air and appears black on chest x-ray. The lung edge is seen and there are no lung markings beyond the lung edge. Also check for mediastinal shift. Shift of the mediastinum away from the side of the pneumothorax indicates a tension pneumothorax. More prominent vascular markings are seen in the opposite lung. As a pneumothorax causes the affected lung to collapse, most of the right ventricular output is delivered to the opposite lung leading to increased vascular markings on an erect chest x-ray. The above image shows two identical chest radi radiographs showing a right pneumothorax. The lung edge is seen and there are no lung markings beyond the lung edge. The vascular markings are more prominent in the opposite lung. The right radiograph shows the pneumothorax marked in blue. What do you see on this x-ray? That was an example of tension pneumothorax. A tension pneumothorax is a serious type of pneumothorax whereby air enters but cannot leave the pleural space. This can lead to a complete collapse of the lung and is a medical emergency. It is a clinical diagnosis, meaning it should be diagnosed on history and examination and not radiologically. In a tension pneumothorax, air enters the pleural space with each breath causing positive pressure buildup. As the amount of air trapped, as the amount of trapped air increases, pressure builds up in the chest and causes the lung to collapse. Important structures in the center of the chest, such as the heart, major blood vessels and airways, may be pushed to the other side of the chest. The shift can cause the other lung to become compressed and restrict the pulmonary venous return to the heart, resulting in hypoxia, hypotension, shock, and rapid death. Radiological features to look for are darkening of the hemithorax and loss of lung markings due to air in the pleural space, increased volume of the hemithorax, displacement of the mediastinum and trachea away from the pneumothorax, depressed diaphragm. The images above are identical, showing left tension pneumothorax. There is depressed left hemidiaphragm, mediastinal shift, right tracheal deviation, and loss of normal lung markings as the tension pneumothorax occupies the whole hemithorax. The right radiograph shows the pneumothorax and tracheal deviation marked in blue. What do you see on this x-ray? That was an example of hydro-pneumothorax. A hydro-pneumothorax is air and fluid in the pleural space. An erect chest x-ray will show an air fluid level. The horizontal fluid level is usually well defined and extends across the whole length of the hemithorax. Causes of a hydro-pneumothorax may be iatrogenic, such as the introduction of air into the pleural space during a pleural fluid aspiration or chest drain insertion in a patient with pleural effusion, trauma, or the presence of a gas-forming organism. The above image are two identical chest radiographs showing a right-sided hydro-pneumothorax. The right radiograph shows the pneumothorax marked in blue and the pleural fluid marked in green. The air fluid level is shown 
with a black dotted line. What do you see on this slide? That was an example of plural effusion. A plural effusion is the accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity, which is the space between the parietal and visceral layers of the pleura. The X-ray appearances do not change with the nature of the fluid. Therefore, transudate, exudate, blood, pus, or lymph all look the same. Fluid appears white and then on an erect chest X-ray, the patient is upright so the fluid from a pleural effusion drains to the bottom of the chest. Collapse may also cause whiteness at the base of a lung. To help differentiate between collapse and a pleural effusion, look at the trachea. With collapse, there is loss of lung volume and the trachea is deviated towards the affected side. With an effusion, the trachea is usually central or, if massive, may be pushed towards the opposite side. Classic radiological appearance of a pleural effusion are homogeneous dense opacity, loss of the costophrenic angle, a meniscus, therefore the upper border will be concave, loss of hemidiaphragm, and no air bronchogram. The above image are identif identical radiographs of a left-sided pleural effusion. There is a loss of the left costophrenic angle and the left hemidiaphragm. The upper edge is concave in shape and the meniscus is seen laterally. The right radiograph shows the pleural effusion marked in green. What do you see on this x-ray? That was an example of an x-ray of a patient with pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema is fluid accumulation in the lungs that causes flooding of the alveoli with fluid. Pulmonary edema differs from a pleural effusion because in pulmonary edema, the fluid is in the alveoli, and in pleural effusion, the fluid is in the pleural space. Causes of pulmonary edema may be classified into cardiogenic, and non-cardiogenic. Cardiogenic pulmonary edema is caused by heart failure. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema may be due to fluid overload in the setting of renal failure, iatrogenic fluid overload, adult respiratory dress, distress syndrome. Radiologic features include symmetrical diffuse fuzzy shadowing with sparing of the peripheries, especially in the mid and lower zones where the pulmonary venous pressure is highest due to gravity. Upper lobe blood diversion, where vessels in the upper lobe are larger than vessels in the lower lobe on erect chest x-ray. Peribronchial shadowing, where the bronchi are thickened when viewed end on. This is a radiographic sign occurring when excess fluid builds up in the small airways causing localized patches of atelectasis. This causes the area around the bronchus to appear more prominent on an x-ray. Perihilar haziness, where there is hazy shadowing around the hilar regions. In acute cases, you may see the characteristic bat swing pattern and septal lines. The above image are identical radiographs showing bilateral pulmonary edema. The right radiograph shows the symmetrical diffuse fuzzy shadowing of pulmonary edema marked in pink. What do you see on this x-ray? That was an example of cardiomegaly. If the width of the heart is more than half the total width of the thorax, the patient has cardiomegaly. Normally, two-thirds of the heart should lie to the left of the midline and one-third to the right of the midline. The above images are identical radiographs showing cardiomegaly. The black dotted lines mark the edge of the heart. The shorter red arrow marks the width of the heart. 
the longer black arrow marks the width of the thoracic cavity. The width of the heart is greater than half the width of the thoracic cavity. Therefore, the heart is enlarged. What do you see here? That was an example of left atrial enlargement. The left atrium may be seen on a PA chest x-ray as the left atrial appendage. The left atrial appendage is normally concave in shape, but if the left atrium is enlarged, there is loss of concavity and straightening of the left atrial appendage. Sometimes atrial enlargement is so great that the left atrial appendage bulges outwards. Radiological signs due to left atrial enlargement are straightening or bulging of the left atrial appendage, widening of the carinal angle, and you may see a double shadow at the right heart border. The above image are two identical radiographs showing left atrial enlargement. The left atrial appendage is bulging out, and the right heart border appears further over to the, to the right than usual. The right radiograph shows the left atrial appendage marked in orange. What do you see on this x-ray? That slide showed pneumoperitoneum. Pneumoperitoneum literally means free air in the peritoneal cavity. It indicates perforation of an intra-abdominal hollow viscous. It may also be seen after laparotomy or la and laparoscopy. On an erect chest radiograph, you will see the free air under the diaphragm. It appears as a rim of blackness beneath and very closely opposed to the curve of the diaphragm. The erect chest x-ray is a very sensitive investigation for detecting free abdominal air since it can detect as little as 10 ml. What do you see here? You may see a darker area under the left hemidiaphragm. This is the air bubble within the stomach and is normal. To differentiate between a pneumoperitoneum and the normal stomach bubble, look at the following. The thickness of the diaphragm. If there is air immediately below the diaphragm, the white line of the diaphragm between the air and the chest will be very thin as it will consist of the diaphragm only. If the air is in the stomach, the white line will be thicker as it will consist of the diaphragm and the stomach lining. The length of the air bubble. The distance from its medial to its lateral aspect. If longer, than half the length of the hemidiaphragm, then it is likely to be free air, as air within the stomach is restricted by the anatomy of the stomach. Is there air bilaterally? If air is present below the left and right hemidiaphragms, it is likely to be free air in the abdomen. What do you see here? That showed an example of subcutaneous emphysema. Emphysema is the no abnormal distension of tissues caused by the retention of air. Subcutaneous emphysema occurs when air is present in the subcutaneous layer of the skin. On a radiograph, there is blackness where there should be whiteness. Causes of subcutaneous emphysema include trauma, pneumothorax or an improperly functioning chest drain, and esophageal rupture. The above image are two identical radiographs showing subcutaneous emphysema. In this case, the patient was asthmatic and coughed violently, rupturing a bulla or bleb and allowing air from the lung to escape into the mediastinum. The air then tracked upwards to the left shoulder. The right radiograph shows the subcutaneous emphysema marked in yellow. This is the last slide. I hope after this lecture, you are more confident in interpreting abnormalities on chest x-ray. Thank you.
for your time.